Well, Steve Ray is known to many as Jerusalem Jones, uh, and he's been on Catholic TV. There's a lot of fans from our station from all over the country, all over the world, and today we learn about his new book on the papacy. Uh, Steve, thanks so much for being with us. Well, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. <laughs> and you're in an airport right now. <laughs> oh, I'm always in an airport. It's, uh, it's to the point where my grandkids say, does Papa live at the airport? <laughs> well, hopefully your plane, they don't start to board your plane while you're talking. We have, a, we have a few minutes. We'll try to make this quick for you. Hey, you're a convert to the Catholic Church. Was it difficult to be writing on the papacy in a, a topic that can be divisive? No, it's actually quite easy because um, the papacy was a big issue for me when I became a Catholic. Um, for me, it was an issue of authority because I used to have the position that I was Bible alone. The Bible was the only source of authority. But the more I studied the Bible, the more it became a problem for me because I realized there was no official interpreter. And there's 40,000 some denominations, and everybody interprets it for themselves. And it became, and, and that's why Christianity is in such confusion today. And I realized that in the early church, there was a source of authority. It was the Bible and tradition and the magisterium of the church. Jesus gave the keys to Peter. So I realized how important that was. So it's actually, a, it was a powerful thing for me to become a Catholic. And the book was uh, co-written with Deacon Dennis Walters. Tell us about that process as well. This is your fifth book, I understand, from Ignatius Press. Yes, it is. And I have another book on the papacy, too, called Upon This Rock, which really focuses just on the Bible and the first uh, eight centuries of the Church, showing that right from the beginning there was no discontinuity. There's a broken, no broken uh, links in the chain, all the way from the Old to the New Testament, all the way through the first eight centuries. There was understood there was going to be a, a pope, the leader of the Church. And Dennis Walters, he's a great deacon, a great friend of mine. He helped me become Catholic, actually. Uh -huh. And uh, we wrote this together because we thought there was a lot of confusion in the world today about what the Pope does, why it matters, what does infallibility mean, all these issues. So we thought we'd write a very kind of a simple-to-read, easy-to-read, A to Z, of what the papacy is. When you write books, Steve, it seems that you learn things you didn't know. What are some of the things that surprised you writing this book? Well, I... You know, when you, you always want to think that all the popes are great. You know, everyone was a hero and a martyr and a, and a saint. But what we, what we learned really as we wrote this, and, and I knew this as well uh, beforehand, is, is that there have been good popes and there's been bad popes. But even the, the, the Lord has always been able to write straight, even with crooked lines, you know what I mean? And, and the, this whole idea of the papacy never said that the popes were going to be perfect, but it, what it did say is they were going to be a source of authority, they were going to be the leader. Every human institution needs a uh, leader, like the country has a president or a king, a baseball team has a captain, a uh, uh, police force has a chief. This is what God gave us in the papacy so that there would always be a source of unity for among us. And when you take a, a shepherd away, it's like the shepherd and the sheep. You have a source of unity. They follow the shepherd. When the shepherd, uh, a sheep takes away, and, and I have worked with sheep in Bethlehem when I made my movies. I used to rent flocks of sheep. And uh, I discovered, too, that they're very stupid animals. They tend to wander off by themselves. And when they do that, when, when Christians wander off by themselves and leave the shepherd, it causes confusion. So one of the things we learned, there has always been good popes, and there's, always, there's also been a few bad popes, but there's always been that unity of the church, and God always uses even Peter who denied him, even Peter he used to lead the church. Well, we're running out of time. Steve, we only have one minute. It's appropriate that we're talking to you about the papacy with Holy Week, uh, such confusion about the chair of Peter. Does the book address all those or, uh, issues of authority that you were talking about? It certainly does. It, it addresses the sources of authority and where they came from and the scriptural origins for them, how popes are elected. It's, it's like a job description of the papacy. If people want to know what the pope does and why it matters, this is a good book. And it's not a book about Pope Francis or Pope Benedict or any other particular pope. It's more of a job description. What does the pope do? And then you can look at any particular pope and decide how good they're doing based on the job description. There you go. Well, where can people m learn more about your books, pilgrimages, and all the other work that you do? CatholicConvert.com. It's very easy. I'm a convert. I'm a CatholicConvert.com. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Steve, and, and we pray that you have a safe, safe trip. Thank you, Jay, and it's been wonderful being with you. Call me anytime. Great. Have a good day now.